name is uh, Sebastian Lebert. Uh, I'm a researcher. I'm working for uh, for Serad, and uh, my position in Serad, I'm the operational manager for for Swim. So Swim is acronym of Sustainable Wildlife Management. So it's a consortium led by led by FAO and uh, and funded by the EU. Uh, as the EU has the main as the main uh, funder, uh, the objective of Swim is quite is, is quite clear. I, I'm not saying it's simple. It's something which is quite which is quite uh, complex. Is to is to uh, question the question the capacity of uh, of local community. So SWM uh, means Sustainable Wildlife uh, Management. So uh, it's a program funded by, by the EU, and we're operating in uh, more than uh, 15 countries uh, around the world, uh, mainly mainly in Africa and here in, in the Gaza region. Uh, Swim is operating in uh, in, uh, in Botswana, Namibia, Zambia, and of course and of course uh, Zimbabwe. So the objective of, of Swim is to uh, find out is to develop some models. And, and, and the model we are currently uh, proposing, I mean, uh, uh, developing, uh, fostering in the, in the region is uh, what we call a community conservancy. So uh, it's a model which has been initially uh, uh, developed, developed in, uh, in Namibia. And the, uh, and the objective of, uh, of SWIM is to uh, find out how best such a model could be replicated, uh, adapted in other country and especially in, in Zimbabwe. So we have the, we, we have the gut feeling that uh, such a model can help communities living in the, in the landscape where they are sharing uh, resource and space with, with wildlife to reach a coexistence to, and, and to also to improve, to improve the living. And for example, if we take the example of, uh, of uh, of the uh, Mushidi uh, community conservancy that, that, that we are supporting in, in Bingham district, we can see that uh, this, this conservancy is squeezed between two, uh, two protect areas. We have a Chitanera on, on, on the south, and on the, on the north, we have uh, Chitis, Chitis Safari area. So we can imagine that those communities. Or have to face on a daily basis a movement of animals like that, uh, going from the, the north to the south, and, and having to deal with this issue of sharing space, resources with uh, with uh, with wildlife, and with all the consequences of this. I mean, which is uh, human health conflicts, livestock predation, and crops being uh, being uh, being uh, devastated by mainly by uh, by elephants. So uh, yeah, so that's so. If we go back to the to the workshop, I mean uh, the aim of this workshop, which is supported by which is supported uh, by Swim, is to find out how best uh, mitigation solution could be could be promoted at community at, uh, at community level. I mean we we all know that human health conflict it's. Uh, it's a big issue. It's a complex issue. Uh, it's uh, and it's something which is which is uh, which is uh, hammering not only community in this part of uh, Africa but all over the world. But here in this particular area, uh, the objective of the workshop is to find ways of increasing the local capacity of communities, but also of duty bearers, for to reach a coexistence. So it's something which is uh, so the need of this training. The training is to. It's not training directly people who are going to implement some, uh, some measure, but it's, going, it's training people who are going to train afterwards the, the colleagues are, are on the ground. So it's a training of trainer. And, the, and if we want to, if you want, uh, the key highlight is you cannot achieve, you cannot achieve uh, 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 a sound, you want to have conflicts with mitigation strategy if it's only focusing in, in one area. So you need a kind of landscape approach. So you need to consider the, uh, the landscape, the landscape where such a strategy can be designed and after implemented for the community and by the community. Okay. So this landscape approach. Secondly, I mean, uh, to have something which is which makes sense, you need deeply to involve to, to involve people on, on, on the ground. And for example, to uh, to uh, we have developed tools, and I will show you uh, later the type of tools we have developed, which is called a role-playing game. A role-playing game 
it's something which is which is uh, it's a tool where you, you create you create the situation on the artificially on the on the mat. So and we're, we're using simple pieces of wood or, or hard cardboard. I'm Christian Fabricius. I'm a professor at Nelson Mandela University in South Africa. I'm based in the Garden Route in South Africa. And I'm working with DevAO and Siran on developing a training course to train people how to become trainers in promoting human wildlife coexistence. So part of the training is actually to teach these trainers how to use some of the tools or instruments that one could use, <coughs> the methods and also the frameworks to actually alleviate conflict between people and wildlife in Africa. And we are focusing on the countries Botswana, Zimbabwe, Zambia and Namibia at the moment. What is happening is that there are field officers working for the FAO, Sustainable Wildlife Management Program, who are coming to this training to learn together. So the materials are being developed so that people can co-create solutions. They're learning from each other, and we as the facilitators are providing them with the thinking tools so that they can actually devise the solutions, but also how to teach others to apply these solutions in the field. So the end outcome is really to improve the livelihoods of our communities, farmers, land users living with wildlife in these African transfrontier conservation areas, which we call the Kabangu Zambezi, Transfrontier Conservation Area and also outside it, and to apply some of these methodologies that have been developed by ourselves and also by, by FAO to actually improve the awareness of local communities, officials, and anyone really who wants to attend some training and participate in the training. So, what we are seeing is a rapid uh, improvement in the skills of as in our participants to not only use these methods but also explain them to others so that others can use them and also we are also teaching them some, some monitoring methods so that they can actually assess whether their efforts are making progress and are having impact on the ground. So this is a sort of longer term initiative. We started in 2023, developing a suite of learning materials, methodologies. People went through a training course in 2023, then they did some assignments. They experimented with the actual training in the countries where they are active. And now we're doing some refresher work where they are reflecting on the successes, the things that went well, things that could improve and also innovate. So moving forward, people are now going into the field and actually going to implement more and more of these methods that they have So we are continuously engaging with them, continuously improving our own skills as well as theirs, and also refining the learning materials that we've developed so that they can be scaled up and others can also use them. Farema, the Field Assistant Coordinator for the Sustainable Water Management Project in Botswana and Namibia. So today we are gathered here for the Human Wildlife. Actually, it's a follow-on training for the Human Wildlife uh, Conflict and Coexistence Trainers and Training uh, Workshop. We had a successful workshop last year in October. So the participants that are gathered here today were selected because they are the champions of 
the main word by particular education and management in their respective countries. And also, since it's a trainer, training of trainers for sure, we chose participants that everybody had ready to, to go and cascade the information to the more participants in the region. So, for example, we have lecturers from wildlife colleges, especially from Botswana, and we also have wardens and few members who work for NGOs that also work with a number of community members in Botswana and Namibia. So maybe what? So this follow-up um, training is building up on the success of the 2021. We are trying to impact more information uh, to our participants and also to find out what are the capacity needs how they managed to train participants over the past couple of months and what we can do as a program to support the cascading of the information from uh, from a few individuals to a greater number of community members who are actually being affected by the human wildlife conflict in the region.